Hello and welcome back to Reaching for Petals with me, Barden. So we're here in chapter two, and we're going to just make our way through this cave. Darkness overtakes those who enter this realm of wet and stone. Turning back leads to another kind of blindness that only incepts at the great divide of light in the abyss. Where is back here? It is better to become accustomed to the dark on our journey within. The only way to reach the highest peak is to descend into the deepest parts of ourself, far within the mountain. The life of the outside world does not okay, go, go where we must dread. Not surprising, There's really. There's no reason for creatures without a conscience to join in on this quest of introspection. The light is quickly fading, giving us a sign to carry on. For now, this is the only option. The only one there's ever been. Okay, interesting. I have to say, I really like this cave here. We got um, similar caves in Ireland. There's a part of Ireland called the Burren, and it's a limestone area, so the rainwater um, eats away the limestone and creates caves like this. And you've got like the stalactites and the stalactites, and then um, curtains and all of those other kind of things. And, then on the surface as well, um, in the burn, there are um, flowers and plants that only grow there. They don't grow anywhere else in Ireland. They don't grow any anywhere else in the world either. It's kind of a pretty spectacular place to see as well. And I like how the music really ties in to the mood of the cave where we've got kind of the the dripping um, and the music kind of sit very well together. Okay, I think this is maybe the best way to go around this way. Or is it? Yeah. Sometimes you get a little bit hung up on things. This seemingly vacant corridor within the chasm consists of a series of interconnected tunnels winding inward and outward. There is no telling where one path stops and another begins, but we must choose regardless. There is a strange familiarity about this darkness, as if you have been here once before. Maybe you have. But that is not the case. You have always been here. You have never left this darkness. Not for many years. The abyss has become a companion and reminder of the warped life you lead. Not everything is the way it should be, but it still is all the same. That's life really, isn't it? But I find it interesting that, um, again, you know, we're, we're here in something natural, but he's using uh, phraseology like corridor which kind of conjures up um, kind of more structure and civilization and kind of the, the hand of man um, in there as well or the hand of mankind should I say in there um, so yeah it's interesting but this is supposed to be a metaphor for our inner darkness They've done the oh, silence of the deep has now away. been broken. What once was a faint drip has now become a bellowing beat of a heart of stone, distilling the essence of life before sending it throughout the tumultuous cavern. The pounding echoes within your mind until there is nothing left but the sound and the feeling of undeniable existence. Forth. It has been ages since someone met with the pulsating rock. The visions granted by this enchanting boulder bears witness to your own faults. These jaded memories 
are not left forgotten and are carved into the walls to stand the test of time. I like, first of all, how the music uh, changed when we got, like, when the the waterfall came along and it was cascading rather than dripping, then the music got, um, you know, went to a, um, a faster tempo. I like the way it signaled the change there. But another interesting thing is that the narrator is um, referring to things like there you talk about a boulder, but um, I can't see anything that, you know, would be, you could say, oh, that's the boulder he's talking about. And it's similar when he was talking about a great oak when we were in the forest. And there, was, there wasn't one... Um, there wasn't one particular oak that looked like it was the one he was talking about that you know wouldn't allow any light through and um, all that kind of thing. But I do like um, you know the the amount of effort that they put into uh, creating this cave. You know, even though it's just a conduit to, to get us to the next part of the story. Uh, but it's still, it's still a nice thing to to experience and enjoy. Just wandering through the cave. That's the kind of thing. Um, oh, now we've got kind of. It sounds like a heartbeat there. So um, it's nice that we got kind of the the music and then the sounds of the cave and then um, reminding us as well that um, this is. This is um, to do with our own existence, our own kind of inner self as well. And here, kind of, you know, the sounds of our own in internal organs. Yeah. Uh, oh, there we go. We didn't need to use E there at all. We just need to push that forward. Okay. I just want to have a quick look around, though. Okay, very nice. Now, let's uh, move on here. I remember um, being younger and um, going in through things like caves and stuff and um, just being generally adventurous. You know, I don't think I would, uh, some of the stuff that I did when I was younger um, and some of the kind of the, the falls and scrapes I had, like um, I definitely wouldn't be able to do those kind of things now. And it's kind of, um, it's strange as you get older and you, you kind of have to come to terms with your own mortality. Whereas when you're younger, you just feel like you're going to live forever and everybody else around you is going to live forever as well. Look at this. This is beautiful. The darkness is shattered at the realization that you are no longer alone. Okay. Why are Nature's you no longer alone? light sources fill the void okay. like tiny bonfires, providing warmth and safety from the dark. Humming and buzzing. These light-filled guardians illuminate the darkness to reveal that there was another beside you all along. Oh, cool. Every step closer brings you one pace further away from this cordial being. But who could it be? In this eternal landscape of dark, only shown through the kindness of the torch-bound insects, with a shape so recognizable, so familiar, there is no mistaking the importance of a being such as this. You do not know. Not now. This is very magical. I like this. Really like this. And it's it's something that um, I think in a video game is like the sight. Uh, maybe in real life would be maybe even more spectacular. But I think the, the experience in a video game um, is spectacular as well. And it has an added benefit in that um, these are insects. And if you were here with this many insects, you'd probably be ducking out of the way and trying to swat them away from you. And, um, you know, it'd be hard to actually stand in awe or wonder at the site because... Uh, just your kind of natural reflexes not to be uh, have insects all over you might kind of kick in 
it's um, it is an amazing site. I like it a lot. Let's move ourselves forward. So it looks like now we're getting towards the end of the cave. So we've got to uh, make our way up the steps here, I guess. Okay, got to do a bit of jumping. Get over on this side. Okay, there we go. And then it looks like we've got to go up this side then to get up there. Yeah. Yeah, look, there's that looks like it might be the exit there. Now let's go down on this side because I don't want to get um I don't stark to beam fall. sits ever so strongly in the distance. Could this be the final terminal before taking off into the sun? The ever longing vent that exceeds this darkness, that brings light into the memory so willing to fade. No, this is not the end, not here. There is still more to witness. Fill your mind with luminosity. Steal your soul with what was taken by the abyss. Hold on to your dream and evoke the past. For remembering is all that is left for a being so broken and afraid of what is yet to come. Okay, that's interesting because we're learning more about ourselves as the actual character in the game um, here. So it's kind of nice. But in the, like in the first, in the first one, um, the, the narrator was nice. It was nice to have the narrator there, but the big thing for me was the memory um, as we're about to go into this one here. But here, I feel like the narrator has kind of added more to our own backstory and um, it's been kind of more significant. But uh, let's check out this, see what it is. Okay, so we got, um, I guess it's the happy couple there. That must be us on the left then. And um, Renee there on the right. Okay, oh, the door is open. Okay, bed's a bit messy. We'll see. Um, it looks like someone hasn't made the bed in a long time. They're just kind of sleeping there, getting up and leaving it, and then going to bed, pulling the thing up on them. And even here, like you got, um, it's a, the place looks a bit disheveled. You know, you got kind of one curtain over here that's just kind of left half, half open, half closed. And then this one um, still has um, like the little band on that keeps it in place. Okay, how about in here? So we got the computer here. Is that supposed to be like the developer's version of an apple on the top there maybe? Okay, so that looks like what we're supposed to get. See the way it keeps flashing? But I want to have a quick look around. So we've got um, table and chairs there. We've got the garden over here. Okay. Again, it, this looks very much like the area that we've been outside the memories that we've been walking around. Okay, we've got a coffee maker there. Um, I really don't like coffee. Microwave. Why is there a spoon on top of the microwave? That's just a bit weird. At least it's not inside the microwave. And then again, we've got the dishes kind of left here. Yeah, it's kind of like, you can see there's, um, like that's more than one kind of 
trip and then like cutlery are about the place and it looks like the place isn't um, well cared for I'd have to say and then the weird thing is these two kettles why would you need two kettles like that unless you were going to make music with the whistle off them or something I don't know um, but yeah let's go check out the memory Years now pass, oh sorry it's the prom, okay. Years now pass and love has blossomed beautifully between both of you as you slowly become who you were born to be. The night is crisp and invigorating and the shining stars swirl and swoon a stellar symphony. You stand, nearly confident, but lose focus at the sight of Renee in her shimmering ensemble. No aperture could open wide enough to capture her magnificence. I think um, we compliment her because um, it's her prom, so she's obviously made a lot of effort getting ready, picking her dress, getting her hair done, doing her makeup, making sure everything is perfect. So, um, you know, it's only right to compliment her. You share your feelings about her impossible beauty. She blushes and thanks you while trying to cover the redness in her cheeks. You then straighten your bow tie and pretend to act suave. She compliments you back and you both laugh and join arm in arm to the dance floor. Okay, let's continue. The music is performed with all the sweet integrity of a promise made in one's youth. You both dance slowly, taking in every moment of this fairy tale experience. A song of sure significance began to overflow the pair's judgment. Well, Let's see, well, when I was a teenager, I was very awkward and very shy around girls. Um, so I definitely wouldn't go straight in for a kiss. So let's dip her through dance. At the climax of the heroic harmony, you success successfully manage to lower Renee with a professionally challenging technique. Renee looks bewildered but overjoyed due to the un unexpected surprise. You both slowly draw in for a passionate kiss. Okay, so we got there with the kiss anyway. Before the festivities draw to a close, the lovely pairing notices a photo booth operator taking complimentary photos. You both agree that there is no better way to commemorate a perfect night, so you list the energetic photographer's expertise. Three, two, one, smile. Okay, that's nice. Nice end there. And um, so um, these guys are obviously at the prom, but in Ireland it's called the Debs. But the two um the two actually come have the same root and it's from um uh, like in the early early 20th century it was kind of dying out but especially in the kind of 19th 18th century that kind of time when uh people would have had grand balls and then um so it would be called a promenade and people who would come for the first time would be called debutants so that's where the name Debs that we use in Ireland comes from and that's also where the the shortened name prom comes from in the US as well um, but either way um, if you know what a prom is in the states then you know what a Debs is in Ireland as well they're, they're very similar um, especially nowadays when a lot of um, Irish kind of younger younger Irish people would be watching a lot of American TV which feature features prom so then the devs kind of morphed into something very similar to a prom anyway um, and kind of the, the the same kind of things that you see going on in proms would go on in devs as well but um, that we're out of time now so that's the end of this particular video um, I'm I'm very very much enjoying this story and this game and I hope you are too and I also hope that if you are enjoying it, you consider sharing it with someone that you think might enjoy uh, my content as well. And that you will also consider hitting the like button there because any support you can give uh, my channel would be hugely appreciated and would really help me out a lot. But for now, um, it's time to say farewell. And I really do hope to see all of you next time. Goodbye. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, Maybe you'll hit the subscribe button there on the right. 
and check out some other videos here on the left.